There are over 500,000 kids in foster care across the United States, and making sure they're well taken care of takes a village. I'm Erin Lindstrom, and this is Foster Care Aware, a production brought to you by Tidewater Friends of Foster Care with support from the Barry Robinson Center. If you've had it on your heart to become a foster parent, volunteer, donor, advocate, or just want to learn more, you're in the right place. For more information on how to move forward, head to fostercareaware.org slash next steps. And now I'm thrilled to share today's segment with you. Hey there, I'm Erin Lindstrom and I am joined by Audra Bullock, the president and director of Tidewater Friends of Foster Care. Hi there. And Heather Watkins, the recruitment manager for Embrace Treatment Foster Care. Welcome, Heather. Hello. Hi, Thank hello, so hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. We're excited to chat with you and for our audience to get to know you a bit. Um, Thanks so for having me. first, yeah. So first up, can you please tell us a little bit about treatment foster care and what that means for people who may not be um, familiar with the term? Sure. So treatment foster care to us means um, children that really need additional support. Um, so we actually require our parents to have a little bit more extensive training when coming into our program to become foster parents, um, specifically more training in trauma-informed care and discipline. Um, so we really feel like although children coming into foster care may not be considered at a treatment level, all children in foster care have suffered trauma. So we wanna make sure that any parent that decides to become a foster parent is gonna be trained to be able to handle a variety of different challenges that children coming into foster care may be facing whether or not it has manifested or not. So Heather, can you tell us a little bit about how children come into foster care? Because I'm pretty sure a lot of our viewers will be a little shocked at, at some of the most frequent uh, entry into foster care. Sure. So um, children actually come into our program when the local departments of social services are not able to meet um, the need for those children specifically. Um, so a lot of times when children come into foster care, they go directly to social services and social services then looks at their approved homes to see if they can accommodate those children. Um, typically, they can if those children are younger, um, specifically infants and by themselves, so not part of a sibling group. So when children don't fit into that box, if you, if you will, um, that's when referrals come out to agencies like ours and we try to look to see if we have an appropriate placement. So we see a lot of referrals for children over the age of five and sibling groups. So those are the children that we typically see referrals for that we are trying to place. And, and when those children come into care, what kinds of foster families are you looking for them? So I have to say that the families that we are looking for are the most open families. So families that are willing to accept children of any age, of any gender, that are open to a variety of different behaviors and people that are really open to accept more than one child into their home is definitely um, a family that we would be interested in talking to. Fantastic. Got it. Um, you mentioned for um, a lot of times it's children over the age of five. What is, is there a, an end cap on that? Like what is the age range that we're usually looking at even with sibling groups? So if people are willing to accept sibling groups into their home, mm -hmm. we are seeing the range from zero to 17. Um, so we are, I mean, we have multiple sibling groups in our program right now that really do, you know, run the gamut from zero to 17. Um, so if you're looking at bigger sibling groups, I would say it's the full range. If you're looking at smaller sibling, sibling groups, we definitely even have some that are under the age of six, like four and six, three and five. Um, so people that are willing to accept more than one child into their home are definitely more likely to receive a placement um, than children, or excuse me, than homes that maybe can only accommodate one child at this time. So Heather, can you speak to me about the um, requirements for becoming a foster parent with Embrace? I, I'm sure there's some training, I'm sure there's home requirements, but can you tell our audience a little bit about that? Sure, so um, some of the basic requirements is that you must have space in your home to accommodate one or more children in care, and families that have biological children in their home are more than welcome to also you know, be foster parents. So whether you have biological children or not, we would love to talk to you. Um, children that are coming into foster care can uh, room with biological children. So that's a question that we do get. Um, so you must have space to accommodate one or more children in care. You must have a 
driver's license and a decent driving record. Um, you must be able to meet the financial requirements. There must be some kind of surplus at the end of the month um, because, and there's not a certain amount, but because we do have, you know, children do have um, financial needs that have to be met. Although there is a stipend involved with becoming a foster parent, you do have to show that you can make ends meet in order to become a foster parent with us. Um, you have to be able to conduct, um, or excuse me, participate in a certain amount of training. Um, all the training that we provide is free. So all the background checks, it, which is also a requirement, the background checks um, and the training that we provide is also free though. So those are just some of the basic requirements that we do provide. Fantastic, fantastic. And tell me about the, the, the youngest age range uh, to become a foster family and um, the oldest. So you must be at least, um, we would say 23 for our program, and then there's no age that's that's cool to become a foster. Parent. That's fantastic. Gotcha. What does the training look like? Just a kind of general overview, like how long does it take from the time that someone says, yes, I want to do this, typically to um, being an open house, so to speak? So I would say we try to get people approved within 90 days, and a lot of that length of time is because of how long it takes for background checks to come back. Mm -hmm. But I will say that the more um, assertive you are as far as completing your background checks um, and completing your paperwork, the faster you are to get approved. So some people kind of drag their feet with their paperwork and completing the training. Those people kind of get bumped to the back of the line. But if you are really eager and ready to get started and really want to become a foster parent right now, then you're definitely going to be able to get certified quicker than somebody who's not so much. We really don't, honestly, we don't want you to be a foster parent more than you want to be a foster parent. So if you're ready, then we're ready for you to get started. Got it. And tell us about your geographic area of service. Sure. So our location actually covers all of Hampton Roads. So that's the whole 757. And then we're actually expanding a little further out to um, the western part of the Hampton Roads area. So um, specifically like Druryville is like, which is pretty far west, um, up towards some parts of Williamsburg and also the Eastern Shore as well. Awesome. And, and when you get placements for children, they don't necessarily have to come from in that sphere or do they? So they do typically come within that sphere. However, um, we have seen referrals for outside of the Hampton Roads area, um, specifically uh, kinship placements, which kinship placements um, quickly are placements for um, actual family members. So, you know, when a family member possibly, you know, is incarcerated or something like that, and they need to be placed within a foster home, um, that can be outside of the area. And then also, if for some reason, there's a child that's outside of our region, and they want a place within our agency, because they have a comfort level or something like that, we will place within um, our area. Another important thing with working with a private agency or a treatment foster care agency is just because say you reside in Chesapeake, you do not necessarily have to rely on getting a placement from Chesapeake. So you could receive a child into your home from any of the local cities, which also really opens up your opportunity to receive a, a child into your home. Right. Wow, that's great. Tell us about some of the support services that you offer for um, families fostering children. So that's a really cool thing about working with a smaller agency. So um, our case managers only carry a caseload of about 10 um, children per case manager. Um, and unfortunately, if you go with a private, or excuse me, a public agency, they're carrying caseloads of like 30 at a time, you know, sometimes. So, you know, 30 um, case, cases per case manager versus 10 is a huge difference. Uh, so. What that does provide is a lot more intimate support from your case manager, and then also more support from the agency itself. A big part of what I do as a recruitment manager is focus on retention and support. So we go all out for back to school, for Christmas. We partner with all the uh, Planet Fitness locations in the whole area for Christmas. So all of our kids are taken care of throughout the state for Christmas. It's a little excessive actually. Um, but they are completely taken care of for Christmas. For back to school, we do a back to school drive. We partner with the local Norfolk Tides to go to a couple of baseball games a year. We have Mother's Day recognition, Father's Day recognition. Thanksgiving, we partner with a local church. They give Thanksgiving baskets for Thanksgiving um, 
you know, all the fixins, ham, turkey, everything for all of our families. We, we go all out. And that's a really cool thing about my job is just going out in the community and partnering with businesses and organizations that just want to show their love and support for our foster families. Mm. So I have a question for you, Heather. So when people are kind of making that decision of which way to go and are they going public or private, there's obviously tons of things to weigh um, and they can make all sorts of lists and kind of, you know, figure it out factually. I'm wondering from like a feelings perspective, I know you've been doing this work um, for 20 years, I think, right? Um, Can you speak kind of like just from the heart around like, what is special about Embrace that you feel like makes it such a good place for people who want to take this next step to do that with? So that's a good question. And I do always speak from the heart when I'm talking to families because this is such an important decision to make. Mm -hmm. I let families know that you really have to want to do this to help kids. Mm. Um, That has to be the primary focus. I know that some people are deciding to go through this journey because they can't have children of their own. And those families can be successful as well. But if your primary focus is to, and your goal is to fill a void, this may not be for you. Because it has, your primary goal has to be to help kids because if it's not, you may get disappointed. So that's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, As far as going with public versus private, if you really want a younger child, especially one, we would not be a good fit for you because I have no idea when that placement could come along, if it will. if you are a type A personality and like to control everything, this is not for you. It's super gray and murky. It's not black and white. Um, you have to relinquish a lot of control because the social worker where the child is coming from is the legal guardian and they have the ultimate say about everything, whether you think it's fair or not as the foster parent. As an, as an embraced person, uh, we advocate for you about everything, mm-hmm. but we don't have the ultimate say. Uh, as an Embrace um, employee, even though my job is recruiting, uh, recruiting a foster parent, mm-hmm. if I found out right now that a child was coming into care and the family that was taking them had no car seats and the children had no diapers, no clothes, no nothing, and I wasn't in an interview with you right now, it would not be unusual for me to run over to Walmart and grab all those things for that family if the family was closer to me than you know living closer to someone else. And that's not my job, but I right, would still do right. it. And that's how all of us operate at Embrace, which is really cool. And so I can definitely speak to that. But I think um, when making such a huge decision, I think it really has to be because you want to help kids. And I think that's really what it comes down to. So do you ever have circumstances that end up in adoption through foster care? And is that yes. something Embrace does? Definitely, yes. So um, sometimes people ask like, okay, well, if I want to adopt, do I have to go through the same training? And yes. So the training that you go through to become a foster parent, when you become a certified foster parent with us, there's an additional piece of paperwork, like one page that would allow you to basically move forward from uh, fostering to foster to adopt pretty seamlessly. So Virginia does what's called foster to adopt. So if the child that comes into care, their goal changes from reunification to adoption, we can assist you with that whole process. And the really cool thing about foster to adopt in the state of Virginia, and I've actually witnessed, I would say probably about 20 of them, um, just in the past, I would say six or seven years, there's no cost. Like I haven't seen people have to hire adoption attorneys or anything, Um, but it can take a while. Like you have to be very patient. So, but yes, we definitely help with those services. Um, I mean, it's it's a pretty cool way to, you know, complete a family if that's what you're interested in doing. However, it can be a lengthy process. It could take um, a couple years to complete because most children that do come into foster care, their goal is reunification. I would say about 70% of kids that come into foster care, their goal is to come back home. And then the other 30%, it breaks down to, aging out of foster care, custody to a relative or adoption. So if you break all those up, those kids that are eligible for adoption, if the foster parent is interested in adopting them, um, the way it works is the parental rights have to be terminated. And then after that, you have to foster for a period of six additional months before you can move forward with adoption. So even if you've been fostering that child for two years, you still have to wait that additional six months before you can move forward with adoption. So we actually, we have 49 kids today 
in our program. And I believe we have six that are doing the foster to adopt process just right now. So. Interesting. Yeah. Got it. So for people who are interested in learning more and taking the next steps with Embrace, where should they go? What's the next step? So they can either contact me directly um, at heather.watkins at embracetfc.com or they can email me or oh, I already said, sorry, <laughs> or they can call me at 757-998-8466. Um, they can go to our website at embracetfc.com. We have an awesome website and they can contact, contact us through there. Um, our first step in our process is we ask you to attend an info session. Mm -hmm. This kind of serves as an info session. It's a lot of the stuff that we would go over. So I would totally move forward if somebody saw us um, you know, through this video and go ahead and make a direct contact with them and probably set up something to meet with them. Oh, that's an exceptional point. So yes. mention fostercareaware.com. Yes, yes. And mention that. And you, already get... and you get your info seminar wave. That's right. fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, you've already done the first step. Congratulations. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Heather, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for the work that you and Embrace are doing in our community. It's so, so, so important. And thank you for what you're doing. We really, really appreciate your partnership. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And a big thank you for listening. Foster Care Aware is all about spreading the word about how we can help the kids who are in care in whatever capacity works for you. Tidewater Friends of Foster Care is here to help support you through the journey. Whether you want to be a foster parent, volunteer, donor, or advocate, head on over to fostercareaware.org slash next steps to learn more.